This layout is a labyrinth, a maze, and it's going to be used in a test to see how quickly an animal can find its way through it. Now the professor's finger is indicating the only possible open road through the maze. Those are all glass partitions that prevent a small animal from making any other progress through that labyrinth. And there's food at the other side. Oh, it's a white mouse. Mr. Thin Whiskers, he's going to be the animal to make the trip. You see, he goes sniffing along. He's hungry and he's looking for food and he's going to try and find his way to where the food is. And it's at the far end of the maze, as we know. Still sniffing. You know, the sense of smell is very helpful to animals. In this case, Mr. Thin Whiskers can tell where he's been, and where he hasn't been, too, by sniffing. He doesn't want to retrace his steps. That'd be lost motion. He isn't like the goofus bird that flies backward because it doesn't care where it's going. It only wants to see where it has been. Well, Mr. Thin Whiskers is really making progress. Pretty well along now. He's getting warm, getting warm. Very warm. Uh-oh, that's the jackpot. He's got it. He wins the prize, an aromatic chunk of cheese. Yum, yum. Well, we let him try it over and over again, this trip through the maze. And the more often he tries it, the quicker he makes the right turns. Gets to know his way around over to the food supply and back to his shelter where he lives. The way he's going back this time, it looks as though he could do it with one paw tied behind his back and maybe blindfold too. He's really in a hurry. Uh-oh, he just went back to get a pal. Well, look who's here. That's a crayfish, the first cousin to the shrimp and, and the prawn. We can call him crusty because he belongs to the crustacean, like a lobster or, or a crab. Now, the professor is going to do a little balancing act with crusty. You know, human beings have a sense of balance, or they should have, and the organs that keep us in balance are in our ears. Now, the crayfish has them uh, in the antennules, and, uh, or feelers, if you want to call them that. There's a little chamber, by the way, it's very much magnified and it has hard particles in it. Ordinarily, the little particles rest on the bottom of that little chamber and tell Krusty the crayfish that he's right side up. Rest among those hairs that are really nerve endings. Now, the professor has taken out those natural particles and has substituted little metal particles for a, a definite reason. When he drops a magnet into the water, the magnet attracts those metal particles and they go to the top of that container, that chamber in which those metal particles were dropped. Well, that seems to tell the crayfish that he's upside down. So he turns over. Now he feels as though he were right side up. But as you can see, he's really upside down. It's the magnet pulling those little particles to the wrong side that confuses them. Now, when the magnet is withdrawn, the particles fall back to where they should be, and the crayfish turns right side up. It's all very confusing. Now we're going to watch a guinea pig try to figure out the quickest way to a meal. Now here are two partitions, swinging doors to them, and food is placed behind each swinging door. Only in one case it's covered, and the other case, oh, well, look who's here. This is a guinea pig, George. He has more whiskers than George Bernard Shaw, who is also a vegetarian. Well, now George starts out. He's uh, looking for food, and he makes his way across to 
Well, he turns to the right. He's a conservative. Goes to the right and goes through the door marked O. Well, there's food there, but it's uh, tied down under wire. He can't get at it. There's no profit in that. So, a little bit disappointed, he goes out. Now he goes to the left through the door marked N. And he finds the blue plate special, a fine vegetable salad. He's really sinking his teeth into it. Well, we try it over and over again, and he gets used to going to the left through the door marked M, which means meal to him, because that's where he finds his uh, blue plate special. Now the professor, Mr. Mino, is going to pull a switch on him. The M, or meal door, is, and also the food is moved with it. Now, we'll see what George does about this. Well, he goes out, and he goes to where he usually found the food, on the left. But this time, it's marked O, and there's no food in there. Well, he, that's really skullduggery been going on, according to the way George looks. He'll probably go home and write his congressman about that. But he's stubborn. He says, wait a minute, I know there's food around here somewhere. So he goes through the door on the right, just on a chance. He has nothing to lose, the one marked M. And there's his blue plate special again. And he's right up to his ears in that food. There it still is, through the door marked M, on the right. Well, the professor keeps switching backward and forward, but one thing is constant, and George finally finds it out. That M means meal. And when you turn him out, he looks around, picks the door marked M, and when he gets there, he knows he's on his way to his meal. He has it. Now you'll see different animals uh, faced with the same problem, and you'll notice the different ways they react to it. The professor is cutting a hole in this wire here, and down along the wire you'll see uh, a hen, Deborah. Now the professor strews a little corn under the eyes of Debbie, and Debbie looks at it. Good quality corn, she's hungry, she'd like to get it. There's a hole down the wire, Debbie only knew it. She's walking down that way, but let's see. No, she doesn't go far enough. She just wouldn't go that far from the corn. It has too much attraction for her. So she goes back and looks at it. And, well, I don't think she's going to solve it. She, she puts her neck out, but not far enough, and she's baffled. She's going to go hungry. She just can't solve this problem. Now we try another animal, a dog, a schnauzer, Fritz. Uh, the bone on the outside, he reaches for it. No, he can't get it that way. Well, zip, one dog, one bone. Didn't take him long to get it. Now we have a monkey behind the wire and a banana as the bait. That monkey is uh, Wilberforce. That is, I, I call him Wilberforce. He doesn't necessarily answer, but I call him that anyhow. Well, his reach isn't long enough to get that banana through the wire. So he has to do a little figuring. Come on, Wilberforce, old chap, put on your thinking cap. Don't just sit there. Oh, now he has an idea. Yes, sir, he has an idea. And now he has a banana. It's just as simple as that for him. Oh, this is a chimpanzee. The keeper calls him Charlie. Charlie the chimp. Now the professor has half a pear in his hand and he lets Charlie sniff it. He teases him with it. Then the professor puts it under that middle jaw. Well, Charlie saw him do that. You know, he likes a, a bit of fruit and he keeps looking backward over his shoulder the way the professor put it as he's dragged away. Uh-oh, what goes on? Why, the professor, the old Mino, has put a wad of paper under there. Now the keeper leads him back to the bench where he saw the pear hidden. Uh-oh, and he pulls up the right jaw. So what does he get? Just a no good wad of paper. Well, he looks under those other jars. He knew there was a piece of fruit around there somewhere. Well, by jingos, he's still looking. 
He's wondering what became of that fruit. He looks like a man wondering what became of last summer's wages. And he's still wondering. And so am I. Thank you.